So the big question is this, how do passionate golfers like you and I develop a stock shot day in and day out? A stock shot that's as reliable as the sun coming up in the morning. That's the question, and this podcast is the answer. Welcome to Stock Shot Secrets. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Stock Shot Secrets. Now, yesterday there was a post by Golf Digest that showed the legends of golf. And by the grace of God, these legends of golf, there's about 15 of them of these golf pros that essentially were um, founding fathers and mothers, if you will, of the golf instruction world. And I'm just so lucky to have many of them, three of my five coaches were on that list, and the other two are probably going to be on there relatively soon. And one of them that I want to talk about in this series was Stan Utley, right? And I thought that it would be really great to kind of, uh, many of you guys might not have had a lesson with Stan, but I thought that we could take a moment inside the Stock Shot Club or inside the Stock Shot Secrets of really diving into what are some of the things, what are some of the lessons, right? A, a, a quick like tidbits of information that I learned from Stan you know, as a player that you guys might be able to take, you know, onto the golf course um, and be a little bit better and lower your handicap. So when you think about Stan, right, Stan is not, all, I mean, he is a great swing instructor, but what Stan is really known for is his short game, right? Like this dude's short game is insane, right? He had six putts in nine holes when he was playing in a tour event, which is Currently, it is the record for least amount of putts on the PGA Tour, nine holes. I mean, anytime you have six putts in nine holes, um, it's pretty it's pretty crazy, right? So, I mean, he holed out two bunker shots. He was one putting and chipping in, and, like, it's just nuts. And anytime you'd see this guy play golf, because we played golf a lot when I was out in Scottsdale, like, the dude's hands and feel are crazy. But going back to Stan and some of the lessons that I would have with Stan, right? Because maybe you guys could learn from this as I learned at it coming from a player. So the first lesson that I learned from Stan was the fact that the idea that golf, that first was like the golf ball should roll essentially kind of like a table tennis top shot. Now, what I mean by that is like if Stan was articulating this, Stan grew up playing a lot of basketball and he grew up playing a lot of ten table tennis. And when you think about tennis, if you guys are watching it on the video, right, like with ta ta table tennis, you're kind of hitting these top shot shots, right? Like if you're like a right-handed golfer, think about like hitting a tennis racket, like and hitting the ball down the left line, right? Like with top spin. So I remember him sitting there asking me a question. He goes, Kyle, let me ask you a question. Like, would you rather have a golf ball that back spins or front spins, like top spins? And I go, well, top spin, right? Like that's what you want. And he goes, well, now let me ask you a question. Would you rather have that be, do you think you'd have better top spin with a slice if you were slicing a ball or drawing a ball? And I was like, well, drawing it. So when he gave this analogy, right, I was like, yeah, I, what I need to do is I need to be essentially, quote unquote, even though you can't technically draw your putts, you need to feel like you're drawing your putts. So I was like, well, Stan, you know, how do I do that, right? Like, what is the process to learning how to, quote unquote, draw your putts, right? I mean, the ball's on the ground, doesn't, I mean, it goes airborne like a little bit, but it's not like actually going airborne, right? So what is the process to drawing your putts? And he goes, well, first, what do we need to do? Because you slice your putts, Kyle, and at this time, I'm probably 23 or so, right? He goes, I want you to go grab your three iron. So I go to my bag, I grab my three iron. I, he goes, now, I want you, what I want you to do is I want you to take your feet and I want you to pull your right foot behind your left, right? Kind of like think about like trying to hook a, hook a shot around a tree, right? And when you do that, I want you to hold it with your right hand, put the ball off of your right toe, and I want you to hook these three irons, right? And we're on the green at Greyhawk in Scottsdale where I was living at the time. And I'm hooking these three irons for like 10, 12, 13 feet. And I am just canning them like one after another. And he goes, yeah, yeah, you should probably just putt like that. I was like, yeah, you're probably right, right? So he does this and he does this and he goes and he films it. And he goes, now tell me what you see when you're doing this. And what I saw was radically different than everything else I had learned or th thought that I had learned or thought that I knew about putting, which was that like, hey, I need to like get in my setup and like lock in the triangle between my arms and like I need to be very stiff and like rock my shoulders and all these things. And he's like, what do you see? I was like, well, I see that like it's very soft, right? Like my wrists are kind of working and my elbows kind of working and my shoulders kind of working and you know, my, my chest is staying pretty still. Like I'm kind of just moving it with my right arm. Cause I'm kind of hitting these little, you know, top spin draws, but 
I notice that I'm staying still with my with my body, but my arm is kind of moving, like the levers in my arms. And he goes, bingo. Golf and putting is an art form. It is just like, and he would say, he go, Kyle, you are just like Picasso, except you don't have a paintbrush. You have a putter. So you have to paint what you see with the putter, right? And when you're painting it, right, you can, you're going to feel like the grip is soft and your hands are soft and like, You've got to see a ball that's rolling, and you've got to hit it on that line. And it's it's okay to – I mean, you don't want to be sitting there putting and, like, it's all wrist, and it's not just, like, all elbow, and it's certainly not all shoulders. It's a balance between all of the joints, right? So that was the first thing that Stan was, 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 was – that taught me was, like, golf is an art. Sport – putting is an art. Short game is an art. You need to be an artist, and you need to feel like you're hitting top spins or draws with your putts. So that's the first thing, almost like you're hitting it – feeling like you're hitting it with the toe first, like a table tennis top shot, right? Hey guys, I hope you are enjoying this episode of the Stock Shot Secrets Podcast. If you are enjoying it, be sure to like this episode, be sure to subscribe so you can always see when they're coming out, and most importantly, if you would be so kind to be able to share this podcast with other passionate golfers who are trying to get better and build Stock Shots because it grows through you sharing it. Thank you so much for tuning in, and now back to Stock Shot Secrets. The second thing was the epiphany that... Um, of how to utilize bounce with a wedge. Now, you hear a lot of me talk when we're doing, whether you're looking at the short game blueprint, whether you're looking on Instagram or YouTube, or you're sending videos into Stock Shot Club or whatever it may be, and we're talking about bounce, right? So bounce, just to kind of, if you're not familiar, bounce is like the underside of the, the, of the wedge, right? It's the belly of the wedge on the backside. And you're trying to use bounce, right? I always say the joke of like, hey, if you're not using bounce and you're dragging the handle, through, you're essentially telling Bob Vokey and Roger Cleveland and all the great wedge designers of the day that you're that they're morons and they have no idea what to do and they should not spend any money on the R&D on the bounce because you're not going to use it. So obviously we, if they build wedges with bounce and they spend hundreds of millions of dollars on R&D to create the perfect bounce, we need to use bounce. So me, I was just like you in the fact that I used to think like, okay, I need to put the ball back in my stance. I need to lean the handle. I need to maintain the triangle and like keep it simple, right? Just like keep it in front of me if you're watching on video, right? Like lean the handle and kind of get that leaning edge and kind of hit it low. And the problem is, is when you do that, you're not using the bounce at all, right? You're actually negating the bounce and you have eliminated it. So what Stan was doing is he he goes, all right, so here's what you need to do, and you got to commit to this for three weeks because I was getting ready to go out on the road to go play in some tour events. And he goes, Kyle, what I want you to do is I want you to go serve your brothers on tour, meaning the players, and I want you to go clear the green of all of, of, all of the balls on the chipping green, and that's how you're going to practice. And I was like, what do you mean, man? Like, I need to hit balls off the fairway, and, like, I need to hit shots out of the rough, and, like, all these different things. He goes, no, no, no. You need to establish how to use bounce, and you need to establish how to make perfect contact first. So if you ever have gone and you've hit a chip off of a putting green, if you don't make two things happen, if you lean the handle and eliminate the bounce, what do you do to the green? You take a gigantic divot out of the green, and you would never do that. So you would go and you kind of like whack them off the green and you would notice that it was kind of like my putting. Like I was kind of using my wrists a little bit to my elbows and my shoulders and I was kind of like whacking it off the green, right? And by doing that, the club head is kind of passing your hands a hair and you're using the bounce. So he goes, what I want you to do is you have to go clear the green for all of your play of all the other players. And by doing that, by doing it on the green, you're not going to make a big divot and you're going to learn how to utilize the bounce. I was like, okay. But... On top of that, you're also going to learn to control your low point. So I was like, because I would always hit everything fat, and I would hit it fat because the club would kind of go inside, the toe was kind of turned in, it would, I would drag the handle, and I would hit it a little fat. He goes, so not only are you going to let the club head swing, right, and you're going to like clear the green, but if you're basically hitting behind it, the, it's going to drop kick into the green, and you're going to blade it. Like you're going to know right away that you didn't make good contact right? So it's going to be the ultimate judge to tell you whether you're doing it. And I was like, yeah, I was like, that actually makes like a lot of sense. So it was weird because I would go to these tour events and I would be like, you know, I remember being in, um, in Tennessee playing in a, in a, uh, well, at that time it was the web.com, but playing in a web.com event and clearing the green. And the guys were like, man, this guy's like really nice. Like he just keeps 
feeding me all the balls back. And I was like, yeah, I am nice, but like, I'm actually just trying to practice too, right? Like this is how I'm trying to practice by my coach. So, so the truth is, is that you can actually work on your chipping motion. If, if you can essentially, if you can, if you can chip off a putting green, you can chip off a, off of the fairway, right? So the way that you can work on this is basically trying to take your short game motion onto a putting green, maybe try to do it on the chipping green. If you're not, if you're getting new to it, or at the same time, if it's winter time and it's cold, like, if you can learn how to chip off of a very hard surface, like like a table, like I'm sitting at a table, like a table or hard carpet or whatever it may be, if you can do that and you can clip it, man, you're you are going to learn how to control your low point, right? And then you you're also learning how to use the bounce. So and the low point, like if you think about it, the low point is like the main thing with short game and around the greens that's the most important because that's what allows you to make solid contact and that's the first ingredient that you need for good chipping is you need to be able to have make solid contact on every chip. Then once you have solid contact, then you can start working on like trajectory and tempo and your landing spot. And then it's like, okay, now where do I want to land it? Like what loft, what, what, what trajectory, or where, where do I want to land it? What loft, what trajectory, you know, like what club, right? So you have to establish that contact, which is the same thing that I had learned later on by Tom Lehman when I was talking to him about my short game on what I do, and he was echoing the same thing at Stan. So those are two legends essentially validating the same thing, which said made me go, I go, um, I should probably do that because they're really good and they're smarter than I, and that's what I should do. So remember that when you're putting, it is a feeling like a draw, right? Like make it artistic, right? Get out of your brain into your body and feel like you're painting putts. Right. And the second thing, if you need to practice, go find your nearest putting green and chipping green and clear the green and notice how your body works to make that that solid contact. And if you're not sure how your body should work or you're not sure about what you should do in your putting stroke, you can always go into Stock Shot Club. You can go to the golf room everywhere. You can send us videos and we can basically tell you everything you need to do. And you can give that a go if you want. But thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of Sock Shot Secrets. Go try these tricks and tips, um, and hopefully it'll lead to lower scores. Hey guys, thank you so much for listening to the latest episode of the Stock Shot Secrets. Now, I want to give you a special opportunity where you and I can chat individually by just simply texting the following number, and you can ask any question under the sun about anything relative to your game or your skill, body, mind, whatever it is. So just text me at 614 541 one nine eight eight. That's six one four five four one one nine eight eight. Subscribe to our text line, and then you can be in the special stock shot community where we can talk about everything under the sun regarding stock shots.